Hello, my name is Ronald Kim. This, the fourth video on the morphology of classical Armenian, is called Verbal Morphology Part 2. We will look at the stem formation and inflection of the classical Armenian verb. Here's the roadmap for this video. We'll begin by talking about the morphology of the two stem system. We'll get present stems and then at two types of aorist stems, so-called strong aorists and weak aorists. We will then look at some exceptional small classes, irregular and defective verbs, and suppletive verbs. We will conclude by examining some sample paradigms of two typical verbs, the verb see and the verb love. As pointed out in the previous lecture, classical Armenian has a two-stem system. All verbs which show full inflection have two stems, traditionally called present and aorist. For the great majority of verbs in classical Armenian, the aorist stem is predictable from the present stem and vice versa. So it is not, strictly speaking, a matter of having to learn two completely random stems for every given verb. Most verbs fall into one of several major patterns, though only a handful remain productive in the classical language, uh, as, as we will see in the next video, which looks at verbal derivation. The few exceptions and ambiguities, unsurprisingly, include several high-frequency verbs, and several of these show suppletion of aspectual stems, where you have two completely different stems for present and aorist. Let's examine these in turn. Present stems are traditionally grouped into five conjugations according to the final vowel of the stem. They are a, e, a, u, and o, but o occurs only in defective goi, there is, and gon, there are, third singular and third plural. The non-third person forms are extremely rare. These different conjugations inflect in almost entirely parallel fashion. So you don't really have to learn different conjugations. All of the person and number endings are the same for these different conjugations. Just as important for stem formation, however, is the distinction between unsuffixed and suffixed presents. Typically, suffixed presents contain a nasal suffix, something containing an N, either on or just N itself. As already mentioned, there are two types of aorist in descriptions of classical Armenian grammar. Strong aorists, and many of those go all the way back to Proto-Indo-European, and so-called weak aorists. Those are marked with a suffix ts and are an Armenian innovation. So in almost all cases where you see an aorist stem ending in ts, that means you're dealing with a weak aorist. Let's begin by looking at strong aorists. Most strong aorists are associated with presence in anem, anim, type number one. That's the default assumption. There are also, however, a significant number of strong aorists which occur beside presence in um or num. That's what I will call type two. Finally, there is a set of deponent or medium tantum aorists in ei. Those have only middle forms. And those occur beside presence in chem or nchim. That's what I will call type three. Let's look at some examples. This is the first and by far most common type, strong aorists beside presence in anem or anim. So we have le canem, I leave, and aorist le qui, I left. You have the corresponding medial passive, le canim, I am left behind, and le kai, I was left behind. Right? Similarly down here, you have usutanem, I teach, usuti, I taught, with the causative suffix, more on that in the next video, and usanim, I learn, usai, I learned. Here are some examples of strong aorists beside presence in um or num. The first set in blue and in um. You have gelum, I twist, aorist, geli, I twisted. Those in red and in num, we have, for example, jernum, I become warm, and gerai, notice the middle ending, I became warm. Finally, we have that third small class of medium tantum or deponent verbs. 
right, with middle forms only. And those occur beside presence in this peculiar suffix chem or nchim. So we have chana chem, I know, aorist sanyai, or down here, eric nchim, I fear, eric yai, I feared. Let's now turn to weak aorists. Most weak aorists are formed to one of two types of presence. The more important type, the larger type, is presence in M or Im. Presence in M or Im almost always form aorists in eti, but note that the third singular ends in iats. The active third singular ends in iats. So there's an alternation, which we saw in the video on vowels in phonology, between ea in a final syllable and e in a non-final syllable. Here are some examples. We have the verb sirem, I love, aorist siretsi, I loved. The corresponding medial passive is sirim, I am loved, siretsai, I was loved. Notice that the active third singular is siriats. Similarly, we have tagawarem, I rule as king, I am king, aorist tagawaretsi, that has an important suffix, more on that in the next video. And finally, the deponent verb, erewim, I appear, aorist, erewetsai, I appeared. The second and smaller group is presence in um or anam. Let's first look at presence in um. These form aorists in atsi, and you'll notice that the a does not alternate. So we have, for example, bam, I say, batsi, I said, manam, I remain, manatsi, I remained, yusam, I hope, and the deponent yusatsai with middle endings, I hoped, etc. We also have presence in anam, which take aorists in atsi. This is important because, as we will see in the next video, this is an important uh, verb forming suffix for forming new verbs. So we have, for example, luanam, I wash, or I am washed, there being no distinction in the present. Aorist active, luatsi, I washed. Aorist medial passive, luatsai, I washed myself, or I was washed. Down here we have a nice denominative to the adjective azat, free. We have azatanam, I become free. Azatatsai, I became free. So these are the presents that form weak aorists in classical Armenian. There are a few exceptionally formed weak aorists. As already mentioned, presents in M or Im form aorists in etsi almost all the time. There are exactly four exceptions. As you can tell, these involve fairly common verbs. The verbs for say, no, and two different verbs for am able. So asem, aorist asatsi. Not, as you might expect, asetsi. Kitem, no, aorist, gitatsi. There's a tendency in the post-classical language to replace these with the regular etsi. But asatsi survives all the way down into modern Eastern Armenian with this exceptional a. Uh. There are some more exceptions. There are presents in num, which take aorists in c. Most presents in num, once again, form strong aorists. We've already seen some examples. Uh, these are almost certainly late creations. I won't go into the details, which are still debated, but for example, we have le num, fill, and the aorist is le ti, I filled. Or ezgenum, I put on clothes, I get dressed. Ezgetsai, I got dressed, I dressed myself, right? So these are exceptional in that they are present in num, but take weak aorists. There are some more exceptional small classes. Four verbs exceptionally have identical present and aorist stems. You may have noticed up until now that the present and aorist stems are never identical. Typically you have a strong aorist and the present has some kind of suffix, or you have a present with no suffix and then the aorist is a strong aorist ending in ts. These are the exceptions. Berem, carry, 
Aorist Beri, I carried. Atsem lead, Atsi Aorist, I carried. Hanem, pull out, honey, I pulled out. And finally, Nistim, sit down, is deponent. Aorist, Nistai, I sat down. This is important because for these four verbs only, the prohibitive and aorist indicative are homophonous. So, berer by itself means you carried, aorist, active, second singular. But mi berer, with the prohibitive mi, means don't carry. In practice, this is not going to cause confusion, but be aware that these forms are the same only for these verbs because their present and aorist stems are identical. Only two verbs have a suffix na. We've seen that the suffix ana is very important. Only two verbs have a suffix na. They rhyme, as you see. Daranam, I turn, intransitive. Aorist darzai. And baranam, I lift or carry something. Aorist bardzi, I lifted. And the medial passive, I am lifted or carried. Aorist bardzai. There are only two such verbs. Four verbs have a suffix ne, ni, as opposed to the productive, or nearly productive, ane, ani. And as you see from this table, all of them show irregularities. Linim is an important verb, meaning become. And the aorist is ele. It is the only such stem, the only aorist medial passive stem, not ending in a. Instead, it ends in e. Arnem, do, make. Aorist, arari, I did or I made is the only duplicated aorist surviving in classical Armenian. Yarnem, rise, aorist yariai, I rose, but the imperative ari lacks the initial y, which ap apparently is some kind of prefix, which was generalized everywhere except in the imperative. Finally, denem, I put, aorist edi, I put, past tense, which as we will see has an irregular inflection. There are more irregular and defective verbs. Tam, give, aorist, etu. This is perhaps the only clear trace of Proto-Indo-European root opt-out, meaning vowel alternations, not the kind of alternations that developed in non-final syllables in classical Armenian, which we discussed in the video on phonology, but old inherited verbal alternations. The inflection of etu, as we will see, is mostly parallel to that of edi, put. Uh, le sem here, aorist luai. Finally, there are some defective verbs, those which have an incomplete paradigm. We've already mentioned goi, porogon, there is, there are, that's present only. There is a verb for to be, m, I am, has no aorist stem. The forms are instead supplied by the verb become, linim, which we just saw in the previous slide. And the stem gog, speak, which occurs only in certain imperative and subjunctive forms, but does not build a complete paradigm. Finally, classical Armenian has a relatively large number of suppletive verbs. Those are verbs that have, as far as we can tell, completely different and unrelated stems uh, for typically present versus aorist. Here are some of the most important examples. We see the verb for go, and these are, unsurprisingly, some of the most common verbs in the language. Er tam, aorist chogai, to a completely different stem. But notice that the aorist subjunctive, strangely, is formed to the present stem, er tights. For the other verbs here, we have a clear-cut distinction between present and aorist. Present gum, I come, aorist eki, I came. Although the third singular is irregular, eken. Unim, I have. Kalai, I had. Utem, I eat. Aorist kerai, I ate. The third singular, however, inflects as active, the other forms as medio passive. Finally, mpem, I drink. But aorist rb, I drank. So these are what we call suppletive verbs, and classical Armenian has several of them. Let's look now at some sample paradigms. This is a typical strong aorist with a prefixed, sorry, a suffixed present. This is the verb si. Aorist tesi, 
present tes anem with the familiar suffix on. If we look at the two columns on the left, we have present indicative, active, and passive. They inflect in entirely parallel fashion, the only difference being the stem vowel e in tes anem, I see, versus e in tes anem, I am seen. The imperfect, you will recall, is the same for both active and medial passive. So tesanei, for example, means I was seeing or I was being seen. The present subjunctive, once again, inflects in entirely parallel fashion for the two voices. Tesanitsem, that I see, versus tesanitsim, that I am seen. Finally, recall that the present stem provides the basis for the prohibitive, the negative imperative. So we have mi tesaner, don't see, and mi tesanir, don't be seen, with the corresponding second plural forms. If we then turn to the forms built to the aorist stem, we see that the expression of voice is somewhat more complex, as we expect for the aorist. We have different stem vowels here, for example, in the aorist indicative second plural, tesser, you saw, versus tesar, you were seen. We have a different ending in the case of etes. Recall that that has the augment, the initial prefixed e, versus tesau, with its strange ending w, right? He, she, it was seen. Note that in the first plural, we have identical forms for active and, uh, and passive. Tesak means either we saw or we were seen. And it's not entirely clear why that should be the case. In the aorist subjunctive, we have a very complicated situation. It appears that here, the differentiation was somewhat secondary. We have, for example, testes, right? You will see versus testes, you will be seen, okay? And finally, the imperative, the uh, positive imperative, as opposed to the negative imperative or prohibitive, is formed to the aorist. Hence, tes, see something, tesir, be seen. The principles are exactly the same for a strong aorist, in this case, siret, si, to a typical e conjugation verb, sirem, I love, aorist, siret, si. Once again, you'll see in the first two columns that the inflection is entirely parallel. Sirem, I love. Sirem, I am loved. No voice distinction in the imperfect. Sirei, I was loving or I was being loved. The same pattern for present subjunctive. Siritsem versus siritsim. And finally, our prohibitives. Mi sirer, don't love. And mi sirer, don't be loved. In the aorist, we have, as we expect, slightly different forms, uh, slightly different expressions of voice distinctions. So we have siret ser, you loved, versus siret sar, with the different stem vowels e eh versus a ah, there. Uh, you loved versus you were loved. We have that diphthong, siyats. He, she, it loved versus siretsau with that strange ending W, right? He, she, it was loved. Identical forms in the first plural, as we already saw for the verb to see, siretsak, we loved or we were loved. Let's turn to the aorist subjunctive, which remember in main clauses expresses the future. Here we have that dissimulation of a sequence of two tz sounds that we mentioned in the video on phonology. Siretitz, I will love, but siretzes, you will love. And you see what has happened to that first ts of the strong aorist. It has turned into an s. And all the other forms, other than the first singular, contain this s. Siretzes, siretze, siretzuk, siretzik, with a still mysterious ending, Siris sen, right? Similarly in the aorist subjunctive passive, right? I will just underline the S's here. Finally, we have the positive imperative, Syria. Notice that the tz is missing. This is a morphophonemic rule of the language. We expect Syriats with no ending. 
but the final consonant falls off. Love, siya, siretir, right? be loved. And that's the way a typical verb inflects. We've seen two examples. There are finally some irregular aorists, which we will not go into uh, in detail here. They are all irregular in more than one way. The forms to know are those of the aorist indicative, provided up here, the aorist subjunctive, first singular and second singular, from which you can figure out the rest of the forms, and finally the imperatives, which show their own irregularities. So, like most other older Indo-European languages, many of these most frequent verbs do show irregularities in inflection. Thank you very much. This concludes our video on verbal inflection. In the next video, we will look at verbal derivation and non-finite forms.